Hello everyone. Good day. I am Dr. Asrama Bivi. I will be talking to you on impact of exposure to violence in children. As an introduction, children may experience violence in many settings and in many forms. Exposure to violence, whether directly or as a witness, can have far-reaching negative consequences for children. This can harm a child's emotional, psychological and even physical development. Two key developmental tasks frequently compromised by exposure to violence are children's adaptation to school and academic achievement. Little bit uh, about facts about violence. Violence exposure rarely occurs only once or only in one form. That means multiple times, multiple forms. Violence exposure often goes hand in hand with numerous other diverse life experiences. They are poverty, neglect, poor nutrition, overcrowding, substance abuse, lack of adequate medical care, parents' unemployment, and parents' psychopathology. These factors can exacerbate and extend the negative effects of violence exposure in children. <coughs> The effects of violence exposure are developmentally contingent or vary according to the child's developmental There are risk factors and protective factors for uh, child abuse. The risk factors are social isolation, disabled child, low intelligence of the child, parental stress, large families, chronic maltreatment, dangerous neighborhood, psychiatric condition of the caregiver, substance abuse, then multiple forms of abuse occurs in the family and poverty. Then the uh, protective factors are parental resilience, nurturing and attachment, knowledge of parenting and child development, concrete support in times of need, social connections, social emotional competence of children. So these are the factors or uh, critical factors influencing impact of violence exposure in children. The type of impacts can be physical impacts, medical and physiological impacts, psychological or emotional impacts, behavioral impacts, cognitive impacts and economic impacts. We will see each one of these in detail. Then, what are the health issues of physical abuse? We'll see first health issues of physical abuse. They can be categorized into three. That is the immediate impact, short-term impacts, long-term impact. So, we'll see the immediate impacts, minor and major injuries, bruises and burns, abusive head trauma, shaken baby syndrome, fractures of different types, battered baby syndrome, lifestyle disorders, post-traumatic stress disorders. These are immediate physical impacts. Then immediate psychological impacts are isolation, fear and distrust, diminished executive functioning and cognitive skills, then poor mental and emotional health. And short-term impacts are, these are depending on the age, the type of abuse and the neglect the child undergone. Toddlers and preschool children, they may show bedwetting and displaying signs of severe anxiety. Elementary school children score low grades in scholastic achievements. Teenagers experiment with drugs and alcohol or fight with their family members. Teenage girls have a higher chance of developing depression and anxiety from physical, emotional or social abuse. Then irrespective of gender or age, a child may experience depression, anxiety, guilt and anger as a result of abuse. Then the other 
short term impacts are altered sleep sleep cycle regressive behavior low self esteem engagement in risky behaviors long term effects of those manifest even after the after years even years after the abuse ends victims even after many years of abuse find themselves dealing with the long term effects of physical emotional or sexual abuse they faced it may span generations if the victim is unable to seek treatment and prevent the cycle from repeating with their own children but some long term effects occur instantly like brain damage and head trauma while others take months or years to become detectable the lifestyle health problems that can result as a consequence of child abuse include lifestyle disorders are malnutrition high blood pressure arthritis cancer bowel diseases diabetes heart disease lung problems like copd lifelong psychological effects are educational difficulties low self esteem trouble forming and maintaining relationship suicidal thought and suicidal attempts depression and dissociative symptoms attachment and social difficulties anorexia and bulimia post traumatic stress disorders the consequences of neglectful uh, neglectful behavior can be especially severe and powerful if it occurs in the early stages of development uh, you may be remembering when you have learned pediatric nursing you have learned about uh, child development where they talk about uh, maternal bonding attachment etc the bolby study shows that maternal deprivation itself is a neglect and can cause lot of problems in the later life of a an individual then behavioral and social impacts are unhealthy sexual practices juvenile delinquency leading to adult criminality alcohol and other drug use future perpetration of maltreatment then emotional impacts include children's exposure to intrafamilial violence can be linked to depression and more negative self concept they may develop post traumatic stress disorder lack of empathy and cruelty towards animals and other individuals showing blunt emotionality then cognitive impacts are lower iq score poorer language skills decrements in uh, visual motor integration skills problems with attention and memory learning disabilities manifesting poor grades a higher chance of dropping out of school then economic impacts 40% of the population in Ch india are children they require a large share of our resources for their development to resolve impact of child abuse a huge amount of economy has to be diverted society pays a price for child abuse and neglect in both direct costs like hospitalization foster care payment and indirect costs like long term care low productivity at school juvenile and criminal justice systems cost etc then the total lifetime economic burden of child abuse and neglect added up to 428 billion dollars in 2015 according to uh, center for disease control usa so these include direct costs such as hospitalization foster care payment and indirect costs such as long term care another study showed that the cost of health consequences of child maltreatment were equivalent to an amount 1.4 to 2.5% of east asia and pacific regions gdp so people can understand how devastating 
uh, even the economic uh, impact or the consequences a child abuse can bring into a nation. See, we will be talking about domestic violence, impact of domestic violence. Facts about domestic violence, little bit facts I, I think I have to tell you. One in ten child deaths under the age of one in India can be attributed to domestic violence against the mother during marriage or during pregnancy. Thirty percent of women have experienced domestic violence at least once from their uh, from when they were aged 15. Around 4% of ever pregnant women have experienced spousal violence during a pregnancy. A total of 437 cases have been reported under Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act in 2016 as per National Crime Bureau report. Bihar reported the highest number of cases followed by Kerala and now Kerala showed the highest crime rate. 3582 cases of domestic violence reported in India between April and June declined from 2020. Government, The Economic Times, 15th December 2021. An estimated 10 million people every year, as many as 1 in 4 women and 1 in 9 men are victims of domestic violence. This is a report from 10th February 2022. So you can understand the extent of the problem that is domestic violence very frequent in India, in all the states and mainly due to terrorism. Effects of witnessing domestic violence. Several studies suggest that child's experience of witnessing violence towards siblings or parents may be as harmful as the experience of victimization itself. Rosenbaum and O'Leary in 1981 itself did research on this and found out that this affects the child's future development. Children who see violence in their homes may view such behavior as an appropriate means of resolving conflict. These children view violence as an integral part of, of a close relationship. This is the reason why uh, psychologists say that you should not fight in front of children. The father and mother should keep away fighting uh, from their children. Then these children, once they see this fighting, they show hostile behavior. Then interparental conflict, verbal hostility, and physical violence between parents shows higher levels of child internalizing and externalizing behavior and lower levels of child competence. The developmental stages and domestic violence impact in a trend we can see uh, according to developmental stages. Infant symptoms are failure to thrive which include then uh, sleep deprivation, attachment issues, injuries, behavioral disorders, and eating disorders. Toddlers and preschoolers, you will see behavioral outburst, attention deficit symptoms, attachment disorders, speech disorders, bedwetting, upset stomach, etc. In school age children, you see poor school performance, depression, and anxiety. And in adolescents and teenagers, they are sexually active, they may use drug, they may be running away, they are violent and turbulent, lack of intimacy, sexual problems and teenage pregnancy. Then become victim, become perpetrator. Research finding shows that at adolescence, the consequences of child abuse and neglect showed that abuse adolescents when they were children uh, increased a child's risk for an arrest during adolescence by more than 50 percent than other or their counterpart. They begin their official criminal activity 
approximately one year earlier than the normal subjects and had approximately twice the number of arrests. Revictimization or substance or alcohol abuse and sexually promi promiscuous and dysfunctional behavior. At adulthood, intergenerational cycles of abuse is seen. This means that about one third of the individuals who were abused or neglected as children will abuse their ch own children. Being maltreated as a child puts one at risk for becoming abusive, but the path between these two points is far from direct or inevitable. Uh, inevitable. Then long term consequences of child maltreatment uh, are in adults, short and long term psychosocial problems have been noted. There will be cognitive distortions such as guilt, shame and self blame, mood disturbances such as anxiety and depression, post traumatic stress disorders, interpersonal problems such as isolation, fear of intimacy and re victimization. At adulthood, they may show self-injurious behavior, that is uh, suicide attempts or self-mutilation, uh, substance abuse, borderline personality disorders, somatization and somatoform disorders, particularly chronic pelvic pain. Then they may show eating disorders. Some form of chronic psychosis may be shown out and uh, multiple personality disorder. Putnam, 1989. Rose et al., 1989. Effects of witnessing domestic violence. Several studies suggests that child's experience of witnessing violence towards siblings, the developmental stages and domestic violence impact in nutshell, we can see uh, according to developmental stages. Infant symptoms are failure to thrive, which include then uh, sleep deprivation, attachment issues, injuries, behavioral disorders, and eating disorders. Toddlers and preschoolers, you will see behavioral outbursts, attention deficit symptoms, attachment disorders, speech. Facts on uh, post-traumatic stress disorders in children. This can occur at any age, and the lifetime pre uh, prevalence is 8 to 10 percent. Females are at high risk for developing uh, post-traumatic stress disorder, that is 10% versus 5%. Then trauma history increases vulnerability, individual history increases vulnerability, an estimated 7.7 .7 million U.S. adults have post-traumatic stress disorder during any given year, and this may arise from any type of trauma. The historical name for post-traumatic dis stress disorder, it may be whole body terms exhaustion delirium, compact exhaustion, effort syndrome, battle fatigue. Then shell shock may be due to brain injury. Then railroad spinal syndrome due to concussion of spine. Then nervous system, nervous shock, neurocirculatory asthenia, then soldier's heart, then disorderly action of the heart, irritable heart, etc. PTSD and causes and risk factors. Victims of trauma related to physical and sexual assault face the greatest risk for uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. Then not all who suffered a traumatic experience may not develop PSTD, PTSD. 
then uh, people who were abused as children or who have been repeatedly exposed to life threatening situations are at risk of developing uh, post traumatic stress disorder and uh, this post traumatic stress disorders in children the causes are either death of a loved one sickness of a loved one like mother especially maternal uh, deprivation then natural calamity man made calamity like war and all uh, witnessing this may cause problem in children then physical abuse and sexual abuse then terrorist uh, terroristic attack this is very common now we know that where uh, children will get scared and uh, they develop uh, post traumatic uh, stress disorder risk factors when we consider frequency and intensity of exposure to traumatic event makes the strongest prediction for developing uh, ptsd then other risk factors are prior mental disorders exposure to prior trauma lower socio economic status lower education childhood emotional problems by age of 6 years then childhood adversity economic deprivation family dysfunction parental separation or death lower intelligence family psychiatric history then younger age at the time of trauma exposure and female gender certain genotypes proximity to event intensity of event personal injury interpersonal violence particularly trauma perpetrated by caregiver for military people being perpetrator witnessing atrocity killing enemy all this can lead to ptsd then persons with concussion and uh, uh, tbi uh, run higher risk for developing uh, ptsd tbi is the traumatic brain injury let us see the symptoms uh, usually the symptoms begin within 3 months of the event four categories of symptoms are there the first one is relieving people with ptsd repeatedly relieve the ordeal through thoughts and memories of trauma you might have seen certain films in uh, this ptsd is uh, revealed by girls then avoiding the person may avoid people places thoughts or situations that may remind them of the trauma then increase the arousal this include excessive emotions problems relating to others including uh, feeling or showing affection difficulty falling or staying asleep irritability outburst of anger difficulty in concentrating and being jumpy or easily startled negative cognition and mood this refer to thoughts and feelings related to blame estrangement and memories of the traumatic event other symptoms are they show uncontrollable emotional and physiological responses to reminders of trauma involves activation of amygdala a locus of fear driven learning and this may create this uh, uncontrollable and uh, emotional and uh, physiological responses uh, then nature of ptsd is a learned fear response and uh, this accompanies other conditions including persistent difficulties in inverse interpersonal relationship mood disturbances chronic pain sleep disturbances other psychiatric disorders the diagnosis and treatment of this the goal of treatment is to reduce the emotional and physical symptoms to improve daily functioning and to help the person better manage with the event that triggered the disorder diagnosis is uh, it is not diagnosed until at least one month has passed since this traumatic event has happened usually we take it takes 3 months uh, if symptoms of ptsd are present a complete evaluation including physical assessment need to be done no specific lab diagnosis is there but some tests may be done to rule out other physical illnesses if no physical illness is found 
the child will be treated by a mental health expert. Treatment involves psychotherapy, antipsychotic drugs or both. Medications mainly antidepressant to relieve anxiety. Then psychotherapy is with the cognitive behavioral therapy. Then prolonged exposure to the events. Then eye movement desensitization and reprocessing. Pharmacotherapy, meditation and uh, virtual reality training. The next is abusive head trauma. Abusive head trauma or shaken baby syndrome is a most often reported physical abuse among children. It is the most dangerous and deadly form of child abuse. It is a worldwide leading cause of fatal head injuries in children under 2 years. Abusive head trauma also includes injuries from dropping and throwing a child, global brain injury caused by rotational or angular forces, involved shaking impact of or both, subdural hematomas, positive or negative retinal hemorrhage, scalp bruising, skull fracture and injury to the brain tissue causes death and disability. And uh, this is often triggered by crying. When a baby is crying, there is a natural tendency for people to shake the baby. When it becomes violent shaking, this may lead to shaken baby syndrome. It is not typically a one-time event, a continuous event it will be. That means repeatedly people will be doing. Then how does shaking cause injury? Stretching or distortion of skull content can produce concussion, subdural hematoma and injury to the brain tissue itself. Bridging veins can stretch, rupture and bleed leading to subdural bleeding. Then brain tissue is distorted, stressed during shaking, impact causing damage to nerve cells and brain tissue. It can be temporary or permanent. So what happens in this? Neuro, neuro axis damage may happen with shaking that lead to apnea. Apnea will lead to hypoxia. Once hypoxia develops, cerebral edema. Once cerebral edema you happens, we know that it may lead to raised intracranial pressure and this may reduce the perfusion pressure, again leading to ischemia and ischemia will go to hypoxia and uh, finally it leads to axonal injury. Shaken baby syndrome, a type of uh, brain injury that occurs when a baby or toddler is shaken violently. Symptoms include difficulty staying awake, uh, body tremors, trouble uh, in breathing, poor eating, vomiting, discolored skin, seizures, coma and paralysis. When an infant or toddler is shaken, the brain bounces back and forth against the skull leading to these symptoms. Next we will see the injury characteristics according to age and development. In infants, the accidental head injury and abusive head trauma uh, is usually caused by inappropriate child care practices. If mechanism of injury is not clear, careful consideration of diagnosis of child abuse is required. An abusive head trauma is the most common cause of traumatic brain injury related hospitalization and death in infants. Next is toddlers and school children. The accidental head injury is caused by accidents increase as children develop motor ability. With increase in use of child safety seats, the severity of injury and the mortality has dropped. Pedestrian injury also increases in this age group because they may be crossing road uh, or may not be following the safety rules while uh, walking uh, on the pavement or pass our way. Then adolescent bicycle and motor related accidents are very common and also sport related head injuries are common among them. The awareness of prevention must be raised. Trainers and players, those who are involved in contact sports, uh, will require education uh, about concussion because concussion is the most common 
TBIND's group of children. Then incidence of abusive heteroma is heteroma. It is the most common cause of morbidity on disability and mortality in physical child abuse. Usually occurs in children younger than one year of age, but older children also can be victim. It is the most common cause of death from brain injury in children less than one year of age. Evolution of terminology. There are many terms used for abusive head trauma. It is called non-accidental trauma, inflicted neurotrauma, inflicted head injury, shaken baby syndrome, shaken impact syndrome. Pre the most preferred term from 90, uh, 2009 onwards is abusive head trauma or abusive head injury. Then what are the characteristics of this? There are child characteristics and caregiver characteristics. Child ca characteristics, 0 to 3 year of age, premature birth, an ICU stays in multiple multiples, there will be colic, physical or developmental disability, inconsolable crying. These are the specific characteristics of children who, who has abusive head trauma. Because of this, parents may not be able to cope with the caring requirement and maybe uh, shaking the baby or maybe throwing the baby with anger and all those things. This is what happens most of the time. Then caregiver uh, characteristics when we consider is see unrealistic expectation of child behavior, immature parent and poor coping skills, caregiver abused as child, substance abuse of the caregiver, domestic violence at home, criminal history of the parents, untreated, undiagnosed mental illness among adult caregivers in the home. These are some of the characteristics of parents or caregivers when a child baby is brought with a abusive head trauma. Why infants are at risk? This is very important for nurses because uh, nurses are the caring people who are almost all the time taking care of these uh, children in uh, pediatric ICUs. Uh, the inside of the infant's skull is smoother, fewer nooks and crannies to hold the brain in place, more space between outside of the brain and inside of the skull, relatively large head, body ratio and weak neck muscles, head body ratio and weak neck muscles, not as much myelin around the individual nerve cells, then infant brain, 25% is more water than adult. That also is very important when baby is shaken, you know, it will be between the skull and the brain. It goes and back and forth moving, making it uh, damage to the brain and nerves. Then possible associated injuries are metaphyseal, rib and other fractures, bruising of the skin, internal abdominal injury, if the impact is involved, may see skull fracture, skull bruises, squalls, scalp swelling, but not necessarily impact on the soft surface, can leave no evidence of impact. Then concussions can occur, absence of soft tissue swelling or a skull fracture is not sufficient to rule out AST. Then bruising may be present. Then important key issues here, infants with abusive head injury may look completely normal sometimes or uninsured from outside. Severity of symptoms vary according to severity of brain injury. Other symptoms are vomiting, this may be usually due to increased intracranial pressure, irritable, itchy, inconsolable cry, lethargy, difficult to arouse, unusual sleeplessness, sluggish or seeming space doubt seizures, breathing difficulty, grasping respiration, apnea, bradycardia, cardiac arrest. So picture shows damage caused when a baby is shaken. Then bruising rule, 10 for bruising rule is important for all nurses who are caring for AHT children, uh, babies they should know about this because they can identify what is there in this shot? Any bruising of the torso, ears and neck, that is the 10, 
in a four year old child that is four of age or younger or any bruising anywhere on child four months of age or younger then condition ecchymosis hematoma petechiae bruising is extre extremely rare in infants less than six months of age and is common in preambulatory infants then ears ear bruising are a big deal ear bruising is rarely accidental especially if bilateral and is a common finding in child physical abuse the next acronym is faces p which we have to look for injury or lacerations on frenulum auricular area cheek eyelids scleral hemorrhage and patent bruising then types of injuries and fractures there are highly specific and relatively specific uh, symptoms highly specific are fra posterior fractures classical metaphyseal fractures scapular fractures sternum fractures relatively specific are clavicle fracture long bone uh, spiral or buckle fracture simple linear fracture etc then red flag symptoms are th there any bruising in the pre mobile child bruises on the torso ears neck and genitalia bruises with petechiae bruises in linear shape or distinct patterns bruises in clusters the history and mechanism of injury don't fit with the clinical picture then green flags are mechanism of injury fits with the child's developmental age bruises in bony area such as knees shins and elbows then one incident one bruise then bite marks and slap marks inflicted adult bite marks are very worrisome typically indicate a more sadistic abuse measurement of diameter can be helpful but determination of adult versus child can still be difficult follow american board of forensic odontology that we call it as ab f4 rule then photography of bite mark is very important nurses can take a photo of this bite marks and keep it as an evidence uh, for uh, the criminal offense then slap marks parallel or linear conditions separated by areas of sparing uh, confirms to the contours of face body no pattern usually on left side of the face because most of the time the uh, offender is uh, right handed and will be uh, beating the child on the floor so left uh, then other uh, other uh, presenting symptoms uh, totally infants with bruises vomiting without diarrhea apparent life threatening events seizure without fever sudden increase in head circumference occult fracture developmental delay inconsolable crying and shaken baby syndrome uh, we can see extreme irritability difficulty to awake the child breathing problems symptoms can vary from mild to severe they may include convulsions decreased alertness extreme irritability fussiness or uncontrolled crying cool pale and blue skin poor feeding or vomiting weakness sleeplessness difficulty waking your baby and the picture shows you that pale or blue skin lethargic eyes all those things then why healthcare professionals are important to identify and report this they have the opportunity to obtain an unguarded history from the caregiver concerns are often weighted more heavily by investigators due to our credibility of training obtained so health professionals should be vigilant take appropriate history document the details with the photographs stay as expert witness in the court of law so this is the reason why we people are very important in reporting and documenting child abuse then management head ct skeletal summary eye examination trauma and bleeding for signs of internal injury or bleeding disorder and abnormal ct mri photograph of all visible injuries report to child line then 
forensic versus clinical significance most of us are taught to identify clinically significant injuries for medical treatment and outcome but in child maltreatment it is equally as important to identify injuries with forensic significance even if considered clinically significant sometimes it may not be forensic evidence so risk and outcome however risk and or fatality when child abuse is missed is 100 percent mortality rate approximately 20 to 30 percent long term morbidity high among survivors up to 90 percent affected disabilities include learning disabilities emotional and behavioral issues speech and language delays vision hearing and uh, hormone uh, problems then severity of disability can range from mild to subtle to permanent vegetative state research is ongoing regarding the subtle brain change that can occur after abusive head trauma a full spectrum of disability has not yet been defined then possible associated injuries are metaphyseal rib and other fractures bruising of the skin internal abdominal injury if the impact is involved may see skull fracture skull bruises squall scalp swelling but not necessarily impact on the soft surface can leave no evidence of impact then concussions can occur absence of soft tissue swelling or a skull fracture is not sufficient to rule out ast then bruising may be present the next is battered baby syndrome battered baby syndrome is defined as the collection of injuries sustained by a child as a result of repeated maltreatment abuse or beating or known accidental violence produced by parent or guardian other names are known accidental injury of childhood child abuse syndrome kefi syndrome maltreatment syndrome in children kembe syndrome infant traumatic stress syndrome known accidental deprivation of nutrition care and affection are cardinal features of this features less than 3 years young parents sex more common in male unmarried couples is the other feature then status illegitimate or unwanted and other reason is low socio economic status lower level of education position elder or younger that is the position of the child then you can see in the parent themselves are victims of battering during their childhood this is a very very important thing to remember when we are rearing children we have to see that the children are not abused because there is a chance for them to find it this as the normal behavior and they may start abusing their children in turn then classical presentations discrepancies between nature of injuries and explanation offered by the parents gap between the injury of medical attention will be which will be explained then soft tissues injury multiple bruises abrasions and lacerations lacerations of oral mucosa along with the labial frenulum of lower lip also pres present slap marks lash marks knuckle puncture punch mark butterfly bruises and pennies penny bruises on the body of the baby who estimate says that 40 million children are abused every day a lack of data in india on extent of bbs and they reported after discharge again they get same treatment two part of every three children 60% is punished by parents that is the uh, saddest situation of bbs the cns injuries are there because of uh, violent shaking and the triad of symptoms is subdural hematoma retinal hematoma and encephalopathy skeletal injuries long bone fracture skull fracture rib, uh, rib fracture that are 
at different stages of healing callus formation etc burns deliberate stabbing of cigarettes treatment based on the type and extent of injury then muchen much muchensen syndrome by proxy this is an attention seeking behavior uh warning signs are overly involved with the doctor and medical staff the parent will be overly involved with the doctor and the medical staff striving to appear self sacrificing and devoting to the child and uh, as i said attention seeking parents refusing to leave the child's side exaggerating say child symptoms enjoying hospital environment and the attention of and the attention the child receives so this is what we call it as muchensen syndrome by proxy it is named after german military man baron von muchensen who traveled around telling fantastic tales about his imaginary exploits and this was described by dr richard asher in 1951 when the parent induces illness in their children to draw medical attention to themselves this was uh, dr richard asher in 1951 explained this muchensen syndrome by proxy is considered a form of child abuse which is a criminal offense the correct name for muchensen syndrome by proxy is now fictitious disorder imposed on another warning signs in children symptoms that don't fit any disease history of repeated injury or illness or hospitalization symptom that does not match test results symptom that seems to improve under medical care but get worse at home the next topic which i wanted to talk to you about sex trafficking and commercial sex exploitation human trafficking is modern day slavery there are two types of trafficking labor trafficking and sex trafficking in us 80% of trafficked victims are exploited for sex nearly half are children and about 80 to 90% are women and girls but males mostly young boys are also impacted uh this recently in kerala also a couple of months ago this has happened the instances of labor trafficking are much higher in northern parts of india more girls tend to be trafficked for sex and more boys for uh, human trafficking is a big business 1.4.5 million that is 22% of all trafficked children are forced for sexual exploitation Fourteen thousand five hundred to seventeen thousand five hundred individuals are trafficked into U into the U.S. each year. Traffickers like to work underground. They don't necessarily want to work in big cities. They are drawn to small towns because they feel they won't get caught. I request you people to see the Hollywood movie Equalizer to find the typical characteristic of a trafficker. Approximately. 40,000 children are abducted each year leave, leaving 11,000 untraced this is the national human rights commission of india's report ngos estimate that 12,000 to 50,000 women and children are trafficked into the country annually from neighboring nations as a part of sex trade in the year 2020 over 900 human trafficking cases were reported with over 3,000 victims across india Maharashtra range high with 150 cases of trafficking in the year 2020. India comes under two tier status in prevention of trafficking. So we are we are, we are uh, a soft country where trafficking is very common and uh, not very hard rules are put on. Uh, then human trafficking is uh, 150 million per year business globally. 99 billion dollars in profits from sex trafficking itself 51 billion dollars in profits from labor trafficking mm. 
then second largest black market crime behind illegal or uh, drug trafficking then produces continuous profits a person can be used over and over one of the fastest and most profitable industries in the world then surpasses gun and drug trafficking fueled by demand for prostitution and engagement in illicit sex especially with minors fueled by supply demand chain that span the globe coordinated through sophisticated cyber network very difficult to expose or disrupt see these are the cruel facts behind trafficking human trafficking whether it is for sex or for labor sex trafficking is, is the most violent crime which we see in our all over the world and in our country too uh, this is act plus means plus purpose that leads to human trafficking the act is that trafficker must commit one or more of the following they may recruit transport transfer harbor receive give or receive benefit means are using one or more of the following ways means either through violence that means through abduction and all threat of violence coercion abduction fraud deception abuse of power the purpose is either for sexual exploitation forced labor services <coughs> slavery servitude and finally the most tragic thing is organ removal causes of child trafficking which i have already uh, explained but the primary causes of child trafficking is poverty lack of education no birth record disasters ineffective legislation lack of uh, enforcement who are the victim children who are victims of ch childhood abuse sexual abuse family dysfunction chemical dependency lack of social support immigrant or adidi workers and their children people who are living in isolation 11 to 14 years average a child is recruited into trafficking 5 to 40 years number of times per day victims are forced to have sex 7 years life expectancy of victims so sad to see these facts then recruitment locations usually these people are recruited by the trafficker either a school malls park bus stand train ra railway stations shelter and group homes teenage parties and social media social media has lot of bad things now actually social media can be used for so many good things but people use for this also for trade so these are the facts who is being trafficked you can see 34% restricted social media use then uh, stalked or monitored 32% 26% exploited or advised victim on uh, social media send harassing and threatening messages for 26% 25% posted or distributed non consenting intimate images then outed victim or spread lies and rumors 19% then hacked victims social media accounts 18 percentage interpers impersonated victim on social media by 15 percent and others are about 6 percent 12 to 14 years old is the average age of victim being sold into trafficking for the first time on average 15 minors a day are sold for sold into trafficking so sad and severe situation exists in the world They, the children have the right to have good living being good citizens but you see how it will be and how sad it is these children not went into trafficking extent of the problem this i have a uh, little bit i have already explained so you can see 1 lakh to 3 lakhs underage girls are at risk of being sold for sex in us we believe that us is the most modern country in the world there it's happened then what about our developing country 
boys and transgender youth enter into prostitution on average between 11 and 13 years of old. Upwards of 95% of those in prostitution were sexually assaulted as children. Around 70% of sexually exploited women meet the criteria for post-traumatic stress disorder. 75% have faced homelessness. 80% were victims of rape and sexual assault. 90% of women in prostitution want to leave immediately but feel they have little or no option. On average, a young girl is sold for more than 15 times per day. One in three homeless children gets lured into prostitution within the first 48 hours of being alone uh, on the streets. 18,500 runaways have been victims of child sex trafficking. 86% were in the care of social services when they ran away. General features of traffic, trafficked children, that is the red flag symptoms, caused or rehearsed responses to questions. So if you caught them somewhere and ask questions, you will see this. Signs of physical abuse, malnourishment and health issues will be seen. Lack of control over his or her schedule or ID or travel documents. Exhibit bruises and other signs of physical trauma. Withdrawn behavior, depression, anxiety or fear makes reference to frequent travel to other places, frequently run away from home, inability to attend school on a regular basis, lack of eye contact. These are the general features of trafficked children. Then sex trafficking and commercial sexual exploitation facts. 97% have substance use disorder. Over 60% homeless or no stable housing. Unmet needs due to undressed, unaddressed trauma, shame and other stigma of being prostitution, prostituted person. Then a majority of women do not have a safe place to go post incarceration and often return to streets leading to dangerous and fatal results. 13 women died in last two years from fatal overdoses. Chronic recidivism, majority arrested at least once for prostitution related offenses. 44% were arrested four times or more, with no one woman arrested 27 times. Common for women to be re-arrested within days of release. 10 persons were re-arrested within a month of their release from jail and 3 persons get re-arrested within a week. All this happens in our country, but prevention is very important. Guiding principle, prioritize a victim-centered approach, inform response with the data, protect individuals and organization actively, combating trafficking, ensure better outcomes with cooperation and partnership, educate children and parents, implement three sustainable services, mental health services, residential programming and access to education and workforce development and reduce systemic barriers, alleviate the factors that contribute vulnerability, address root causes and social determinants, monitoring and evaluation, mandate standardized reporting from all agencies and programs receiving funding, victims re-entry and reintegration into uh, natural life or social life in the society, interventions need to be appropriate to the needs and heterogeneity of the population. Conclusion, impact of child abuse of any time is multi-pronged. It is a long last life, it is long lasting and lifelong. As health professional, nurses have a major responsibility to prevent child abuse. If happened, its impact need to be curtailed. Nurses have a duty to care for people with compassion and respect the inherent worth and dignity of the individual under their care, irrespective of age, creed, caste, and socioeconomic status. Victims of abuse have been violated in physical, sexual, or emotional ways. Nurses are expected to deliver care, no matter how difficult or ugly the situation may be. So please remember, 
the age and developmental status of the child may influence the outcome of maltreatment experiences early neglectful and physically abusive practices have devastating consequences for small victims the effects that appear at only one life stage whether immediately following the maltreatment or later are often different from those that persist throughout life then if you consider gender differences violent and delinquency analysis showed high rates of arrest for violence among boys and sexual promiscuity and teenage pregnancy have primarily included females who are sexually abused and boys externalizes and girls internalizes here are the f- some references for you people to read if you wanted to go through and also you will get the uh, notes in that lot of references are given please go through it while uh, uh, writing your examinations thank you for being patient listeners if you have any questions please come up with that thank you